Do boys play hard to get or are they genuinely just really shit at replying? Why do boys pull girls in front of you like it's gonna make us more attracted to them? Is there a particular reason as to why boys kiss us on the forehead? Why do boys ghost you when they finally get it? Do you know the infuriating thing? I filmed this video. I sat here for like 30 minutes filming this fucking video and then my phone decided to fuck up it had locked up way through and nothing saved. And I made a promise to Vic that I'd do my video. So can't back out. Oh, I've got to film this all again. <laughs> we move. Um, cool. So look, end of the day. I know it's been nine days or 10 days or whatever, but regular uploads. I'm doing it. I, I promised you I'm doing it. Here it is. So we're do doing a play on like one that I've already done. So I've done an Agony Uncle. So, and these look quite popular and these are popular in my lives because a lot of people always kind of want to get my advice and my opinion because i'm a boy and i'm a bit older so what we're doing today is we are doing what it means if a boy says this or a boy does that your questions answered i post on my instagram saying what do you girls want to know uh you know i'll tell you straight you know what is it that you want to know about us boys what does it mean when he does this what does it mean when he does that bung your questions in i'll answer them i got nearly 550 responses <laughs> so i'm not going to be able to do all of them a lot of them were the same thing so we'll go over the same ones and bloody rady rada there was fucking loads of them so i'm gonna answer them for you you know what does it mean when a boy does this what does it mean when a boy does that it's coming from me i'll be honest with you i'll tell you from my experiences and what i actually think is going on just to help you lot out because i know that boys are a bit of a mind fuck sometimes so are you girls but you know i can't do it from a girl's perspective because i'm not a girl as much as a lot of you don't believe me i'm not a girl <laughs> that's what we're gonna do kind of like a little play on the agony uncle thing but it's your questions answered from a boy you know so you can get a boy's perspective so first one nice and easy one do boys play hard to get or are they genuinely just really shit at replying now i am one of the worst replies in the world but the reason that I'm one of the worst replies in the world is because I don't want to reply and I can't be bothered to the people that mean something to me, right? Like my family, my girlfriend, you know, close friends and I have people that I actually want to reply to, I will reply to. It's that thing that all you girls say, if he wanted to, he would. If I want to reply to someone, I will. You know, I can go, if I want to, I will reply to someone within like seconds. If I don't want to reply to him, I, I can sometimes forget. So to be brutally honest with you, no one is that forgetful. They might not reply or completely forget about a text here and there, but if they're genuinely like not just not replying to you for hours and hours and end, they're not that into you. You know what I mean? Like they're just. But along with the whole hard to get thing, um, <clears throat> yes, the answer is yes. Obviously, us boys do play hard to get. You girls play hard to get. Everybody plays hard to get at the start of a relationship. It's fun, it's exciting, you don't know what's going on. But a little bit of hard to get never hurt anyone. But it does get to a certain point within that relationship, depending on how long you've been to like seeing each other or talking to each other, that the hard to get is no longer attractive. And if they're still playing hard to get four, five, six, seven months down the road, that's not a good sign. You know what I mean? There should be a transition of playing hard to get and then actually showing that person that you want to be with them and you care for them and not still playing mind games with them. So hard to get is fine at the start. If it carries on and it's longer than it should be. Yeah, Houston, we've got a problem. <laughs> Another one, and obviously I'm not going to name names in these because I don't want to break people out and stuff like that. Another one says, why do boys pull girls in front of you like it's going to make us more attracted to them? <sighs> I have done this. <laughs> I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a whole point of wanting us to make you more attracted to us. Now I'd done this when I was quite young, uh, and I'm guessing the person that asked this, you know, you, you're probably late teens or early twenties, and the guy's not really grown up that much. To be brutally honest with you, it's a way of us kind of knowing if you get jealous or not, and it's the easier option of seeing if you like us. Nobody at that age, or if they're not confident enough, likes to have a sit down conversation with someone and turn around and go, do you know what? We're gonna have an adult conversation. I like you, do you like me? No one likes making the first move. So in a way, by a boy flirting with another girl in front of you, it's like a forceful way of, it's a way of forcing your feelings out. 
basically, because if he starts flirting with another girl, just to let you know, that boy's probably got no intention of actually pulling that girl. He's probably just flirting with her in front of you just to be a dick. What he's doing is he's forcing your emotion. So if you get jealous, he knows that you like him. If you don't react, he knows that you don't like him as much. Yeah, he probably should have a conversation with you and talk to you about it. But that's the honest truth. That is, that's what I've done in the past. I flirted with a girl in front of a girl that I was speaking to to see if she got jealous because then depending on her reaction was how she felt about me. It's not the best way to go about things, but that's the honest answer. It's just a bit of a game, really. It's a game that doesn't need to be done and it can be avoided very easily, but it's a game nonetheless and it's going to happen. So I would, if he's trying to do that, I'd probably just have a conversation with him and be like, what are you doing? Like, come on. You know, uh, this was asked a lot and there's two that tie into this. So one of them says, is there a particular reason as to why boys kiss us on the forehead? Yes. In my opinion, yeah. If a boy kisses you on the forehead, he's basically showing his appreciation for you. It shows how much he likes you and it shows that he cares for you. In my opinion, I don't go around handing out forehead kisses to just anyone, right? That's not something that I would hand out willy nilly, let's say. Um, I would only be giving a girl forehead kisses if I actually genuinely liked her. And the way that you know that that is them showing you affection is because we don't get anything out of that kiss. We know how much you girls like forehead kisses. We know how much you love them. So that's just our little way of kind of one, making you happy because you like them so much. We don't get anything out of it. It's not like we're kissing you on the lips or anything, or like anything like that in a sexual way to kind of instigate anything. You know, it's kind of just like a, a sign of just, I love you or I like you. Um, and in the same one, there's another question saying, what does it mean when a boy gives you forehead kisses, you know, straight after doing the deed? Again, it's just like a sign of appreciation. It's a, like, a, I like you. And I, and I spoke about this on my TikTok and there was a lot of comments of people going, my sneaky link does this. You may need to have a conversation with him because I don't go handing out, you know, forehead kisses to just anyone. You know, they're, they're, they're quite, a, they're not like a serious thing. They're not like a big deal, but like, they're quite an intimate thing in my eyes. Do you know what I mean? It's not just, you're not just kissing each other. You're not just kind of doing the deed and then kind of buggering off. Like it's an intimate moment. Um, so I would be having conversations with your sneaky links if they're giving you forehead kisses, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the reason. It's kind of like an appreciation thing of, I like you or I love you. I'm not getting anything out of this. This kiss isn't leading me anywhere. You know, I'm not going to get the old, I'm not going to get, you know, <laughs> that is just a pure sign of me going, I love you. You know what I mean? Or I like you in, in whatever stage you're in in your relationship. So it's what forehead kisses mean. That's what they mean. How do you know if a boy is lying? Fuck me. How do you know if anyone's lying? Do you know what I mean? Gut instinct, really. If you know that person, you'll know they're lying. You know what I mean? Their body language change. Like, you, their, their speech changes. The way they act change. You know, every, everything changes. The only way you can tell if that person's lying is if you know someone. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know everyone in the world. I don't, I, you know... I would be able to tell you if my friends or my girlfriend or my family lied because they're all close to me. I'd be able to tell if they were lying. You're the best judge of that, unfortunately. You're never going to fully know. Unless you hook them up to a lie detector, but that's a bit weird. <laughs> but unfortunately, the best way I feel is your gut. If you bring a conversation up, Right, and then they start acting different and weird and stuff, and your gut is sitting there going, something's not right about this situation. Nine times out of ten, something's not right about the situation. Do you know what I mean? Just follow your gut. There's no telltale way of telling if someone's lying. Some people are very, very, very good liars. Some people are shit liars. Vic being one of them, she's fucking terrible at lying. Um, some people lie like it's nothing. Some people just can't lie. It depends what the type of person is. So, yeah. You've just got to judge for yourself, unfortunately, on that one. And there is not really any telltale sign of knowing unless you get definitive proof. So this one came up a lot. Why is it when us girls start showing an actual interest, you boys, you know, disappear and, and, and ghost us? Uh, the thing is, there's a lot of, and I'm going to say people because I, I, don't, I, think, I don't think this is just boys. There's a lot of people out there that only like the chase part of a relationship. Now, the chase part is like I've said earlier, like the hard to get part, the flirty part, 
the oh yeah I'll see if I can pencil you in in the diary oh, I don't know I don't know when I'm free or oh, maybe I'm free oh yeah you'll be lucky that sort of flirty kind of stuff you don't know what's going on you kind of know you're liking each other but you don't fully know where it's going as soon as actual feelings start to come into that dynamic the whole relationship changes um you know it's no longer i'll see if i can pencil you in in the diary i'll see i'll see what i'm i'm see i'll see if i'm free oh yeah you think so dear yeah you'll be lucky it's i like you when am i see i want to see you when are you free when can i see you it changes and a lot of people don't like change and a lot of people only enjoy the chase part of a relationship um i've been there I just enjoyed the part where, you know, you were speaking, it was fun, it was flirty, you didn't really know what's going on. And then as soon as it kind of feeling started to get involved, I was like, no, fuck no, baby. Do you know what I mean? Like, absolutely not. I, I, I didn't want it. You know, some people aren't genuinely aren't ready for a relationship, but that also sometimes means that people aren't ready for a relationship with you. Um, when they say they're not ready for a relationship. But I'm, I've got another question. We'll get on to that one. Unfortunately, that's just life. Some people you're going to start to put more effort into and they're not willing to put the same effort in and they dip away and they don't they don't want that serious thing they want to have fun and they just want to do what they want to do unfortunately that is life and you are going to have to go through many a talking stage many a seeing each other stage and many a fucking relationship before you actually find someone that is willing to put the effort into you i don't specifically know why we do it but there is just some boys out there that just like the chase part of a relationship and it depends on their maturity levels and where they are at the stages in their life. And sometimes they just enjoy the chase and then when it's no longer chasey and flirty and vibey all the time, they get bored. And they don't wanna be with you, plain and simply. They're not willing to put more effort in to make it work, even though it's not flirty in the chase stage anymore. They don't want that, so they bugger off. I know it's gonna hurt, but that's the truth. And then a similar one rolling on from that is why why do boys ghost you when they finally get it? Look, you always want what you can't have. And the entire time that you're kind of speaking and flirting and that chase thing again, you have something that they want. They want you for one night, unfortunately. It's just one of them things. Again, it is life. It's what happens. Um, a lot of girls do it as well. You know, if you're both in the same place where you're kind of like, yep, we're going to do the deed and we're going to go our separate ways, you're great. But if one of you's not like that, it does hurt. And ghosting is shit because you never have an explanation and you always have that unanswered question of why did they stop talking to me? I think in boys' heads and in some girls' heads as well, it's easier to ghost because it avoids an argument. It, it avoids a lot more drama and it they think that it's not going to hurt you as much. Whereas actually sitting there wondering why they ghosted you does hurt you. Look, I've been on the receiving end of ghosting and I've also been the one who has been ghosting people. It's shit. Everybody has done it. And if you haven't, you will experience it. Um, it's just one of them things where they think that is the easier option. Instead of sitting you down and just telling you the truth and saying, look, we had loads of fun. I had a great night. I don't want to do this anymore with you. I'm really sorry. I can't see this going anywhere. It's easier to kind of go, I had a great night. Yeah, I'll see you again soon. And then just never talk to you again because it's easier. Out of sight, out of mind. If you're out of sight, you're out of his mind. He's not thinking about that. He's thinking, cool, that situation's done. She, she'll get the picture. It's calm. If they do ghost you, just ghost them back. You know what I mean? Don't sit there and fucking cry about it. It's hard not to, I understand, especially if it's like a a long-term thing. But if it's a new thing, okay, and that guy's kind of, you've been meeting up and you've been doing whatever, and then you finally do the deed and he fucks off, he was clearly an arsehole, weren't he? So just don't give him the time of day anymore and leave it. It's just one of them things. It's life. You've got to go through. You've got to kiss a lot of frogs to find a prince, girl. You know what I mean? That's what you got to do. Will a guy be more sensitive the more he's into a girl? Plain and simply, yeah, of course he will. There's different types, though, and there's different scenarios. Me, I am very much wearing my heart on my sleeve, and if I want to be a soppy bastard with someone, I will be. I'm a dickhead on the outside, but, yeah, once you get to know me a little bit better... And once I start to, once that girl kind of starts to make me feel comfortable and she becomes my comfort and, you know, my, my barriers start to come down, yeah, I'll be more sensitive with her. Yeah, of course I will. But if I'm not comfortable with you and I'm not feeling you, you'll, you'll get dickhead, Matt. Funny dickhead, Matt. You'll, but you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to get the sensitive side of him. So, yeah, of course. If a boy, if a boy is... You know, the more he likes you and the more he feel comfortable with you and the more he feel, feels like he can tell you more and more stuff, the more his sensitive side will come out. However, 
everyone is different and there is boys that will take a very long time to be able to do this and there's some boys that will do it straight away i am one of them boys that as soon as i feel comfortable with someone i can just be a bit soppy and a bit sensitive with them but there's some boys that even if they are comfortable with a girl will still not be able to be sensitive and soppy with them because in today's society men are meant to be men and they're not meant to show emotions they're meant to be the man and they think that if they start being soppy and sensitive to you you might think differently of them so if it's been a long time and you've still got no really like sensitive side to them give them a little prod talk to him about it turn around and go it'd be really nice just once in a while if i could actually see some sort of sensitive side to you so i know that we're on the same emotional level you know we're on the same level it doesn't have to be all the time because i know that you're clearly not that type of person but it would be nice sometimes to know that you're on the same level as me. And I think that that would kind of lift a little weight off his shoulders because then he knows that he can confide in you and you're not going to judge him for it. You know, you're not going to judge him for being a bit sensitive with you and go, fucking wetty, what are you doing? Like, shut up. Because a lot of lads don't understand that. You know, we've got, like I've said before, we've got insecurities, we've got issues, we've got, you know, we're worried about rejection and shit like that. So if it's been a long time and you haven't seen it, just give him a little prod. Tell him that you want to see it. And you actually find that he might start actually being a bit more sensitive with you but yeah the, the overall answer is of course the more a guy is into you the more you're going to see the sensitive side to him because he's going to feel more and more comfortable with you what does it mean when a boy turns around to you and says i want to meet up with you i want to spend time with you and i want to have fun <laughs> um nine times out of ten that basically means he wants to meet up with you he wants to spend time with you and he wants to um if this guy wanted anything serious with you, in my personal opinion, everybody that I've wanted something with, I have asked out on a date. I have turned around and said, do you want to go out on a date? Um, or do you want to meet up and get to know each other? I've left the fun part out of it because the fun part basically means that they're looking for fun. They're not looking for anything serious. They want to meet up. They want to spend some time with you and get to know you. You know, they're not just going to turn up and then do the deal with you straight away. You know, that's a bit weird. They're going to meet up with you. You'll get to know each other and you'll have a bit of fun. You know, fun comes with dates anyway. You know, you don't have to you don't have to turn around and say, let's have some fun. Because if you're having a good date, you're going to have fun. You know, that comes with it. But the fact that they're turning around and saying and have some fun with, you know, with each other. It's kind of insinuating that they kind of want one thing and one thing only. And that isn't anything serious. If it was anything serious, he would ask you out on a date like a gentleman and turn around and go, do you want to go out on a date with me? Or do you want to meet up and spend some time together and miss the fun part off? So, yeah, it kind of means that he's looking for one thing and one thing only. But he is also kind of being straight up with you. You know, he's turning around to you from the start and going, do you want to just have some fun? So at least he's being straight up with you from the start. A bloody huge one. I got asked, why do boys act differently around their mates? Oh, I hate this one. There's not really a, a straight line answer for you. It's a mixture of things. Number one, they're trying to show off. They are trying to show off in front of you when they're with their group of friends. You know, say three, four, five of their friends are there. They don't want to look like one of the boring boys of the group. Okay, they want to look like one of the big personalities of the group, one of the Jack the Lads. So they're showing off not only to you, but they're also showing off to their boys because they're you know he's got this boost of confidence because he's with a girl you know the boys are like talking to the girl and stuff like that you know you're a good looking girl whatever blah 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 he's then showing off to the boys by being jack the lad and you know rah 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 it's basically just showing off it's like a confidence thing he's obviously quite l not insecure or low on confidence but he obviously hasn't got enough constant confidence to just sit there and be himself throughout the entire thing you know i don't really act up I used to. I, I, of course I used to. Every every lad has. But the older you get and the more mature you get, you don't have to act in a certain way when other people turn up. You know, I am just the same person who, no matter who I meet. And I think that comes with age and maturity and, you know, a good lot of years of kind of being one of them twats that, you know, tried to be Jack the Lad. Lads, if there's any of you watching and you're out on a date with a girl and your boys walk in or you're introducing the, your girlfriend to the boys for the first time, please just be yourself. Because number one, your bird or the girl you're on a date with is going to see straight through you and be like, why the fuck is this twat acting like this? And number two, 
a lot of the times your boys are sitting there going, why the fuck is he acting like this? What a dickhead, he never acts like this. Do you know what I mean? So it's a confidence thing, it's a showing off thing, it's the kind of show that he's an alpha male or you know, he's, he's, he's one of the funnier ones of the group so he doesn't look like one of the boring ones. That's all it is. It's nothing too deep, but I can understand why it's annoying. But just be yourself, boys. Do you know what I mean? She'll like you a lot more if you just carry on being the same person throughout the day instead of having 15 different fucking personalities. Do you know what I mean? Does a boy like you if he calls you babe or baby? Now, bit of a sticky one. Because babe is very much within my vocabulary, being from Essex. Okay? Babe, depending on what context it's used in, okay, can be either. So, if you're walking past him on the street and he goes, Hello, babe, you all right? No, he don't like you in that way. It's just the way, that's a way of greeting you. It's like saying mate, um, especially if you're a southerner and especially if you're from Essex. Um, if he uses babe in a different way, like you two have been speaking for a while, you're talking over text and it's just you and him, you know, you're on the text message and he's going, he's going, of course, baby, I'll come see you. Like, when do you want to meet? He obviously likes you. The second one, baby, I have never walk past someone that I've known in the street and gone, hello, baby, you all right? No, the only person I would even dare call baby is my girlfriend, right? So if a boy is calling you baby, yeah, he likes you. You know what I mean? That's not that's not a word that you throw around to people <laughs> that are like your mates or something. Do you know what I mean? You might go, yeah, baby, like, yeah, baby. Do you know what I mean? It's like a joke, again, if, 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 if you're in a situation, you're like, do you want to go to McDonald's? He goes, yeah, baby. Maybe not take it too like serious. But if he's turning around and genuinely like calling you baby, like, yeah, of course, baby. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, guy probably likes you. Do you know what I mean? He ain't going to be throwing that out willy-nilly. Baby's not exactly in my vocabulary. Baby is, do you know what I mean? It's, it, it depends in what context. But I'm guessing you mean in like the other contexts that I've said, not just walking past each other in the street. So, yeah. He probably likes you. He probably don't want to just call you your name. He probably just wants to call you babe or baby. So yeah, he probably does like you a little bit. So start calling it him back. We like that too, you know. Why are boys so hot and then so cold? Plain and simply, if he's hot and he's all over you and you're talking and he's texting back all the time and you're getting in the rhythm, right? And then he goes cold, someone else has got his attention. And then the reason he goes hot again is because the other person that he was getting attention off is now... Is now <laughs> and then the reason he becomes hot again is because the person that he was getting attention off isn't giving him, him as much. So he's come back to you because he knows that you'll give him loads of attention because... You're like, fucking hell, he's not giving me attention in so long. Oh, it's so nice to have his attention. So you're texting, 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 texting. And you're back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he's loving it. He gets all the attention. And then as soon as someone else starts giving him more attention or better attention, you know, and I don't mean that horribly, but, you know, say he, she's more his type or they get on a little bit better and she starts giving him more attention, he goes cold on you again. Basically, he wants his cake and he wants to eat it. Get rid of him. Like little bit of an off offset here okay if you're putting in effort and you are not getting the same effort back walk the fuck away or put in the same amount as effort as them and if that isn't enough for you walk away now it should always be equal within a relationship because you need to set boundaries very very early on in talking stages and seeing each other stages you need to set boundaries up before you get serious now, if you don't set boundaries up, okay, people will get used to the, how the way they've been treated. So, for example, if you give someone 80% of your love and affection all day, every day, and they only give 20%, and that is what you've always done, and that is the dynamic of how the relationship has been the entire time through the talking and seeing each other stage, that person is going to be used to only having to give 20%. And nine times out of 10, when you start to come lower down and giving less effort, they get pissed off at you. They're like, you're being weird. Why have you you're being you're being off on me? But you can't moan at them because they've given you 20% from the get-go and you was okay with you carried it on. You carried it on. They thought you was okay with 20%. That might be their limit. That might be all they're willing to give. So to avoid situations like that and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, only accept the effort that you put in. If you're in a little talking stage and you're giving 10% and they start giving 10% back, great. 
give another 10%. If they then give another 10% to 20%, great. Some people have limits. Some people might only be out, might be maxed out at like 30, 40%. And if you're willing to take on the extra 10%, that's fine, but it should always be equal. It should always be equal. If you're, you should always get the effort that you put in, you should receive that back. And if they're not willing to do that, fucking go find someone that is because there is seven eight billion people on this planet there will be someone in this world that is willing to give you the same effort if not more right to make you happy don't settle for some geezer that you've met at school or some geezer that you grew up with and lives 30 set 30 seconds around the fucking corner from where you grew up he ain't your soulmate trust me expand a little bit you know <laughs> just only accept the effort that you put in back do not settle for anything less. That's all I'm saying. I have to keep checking if my fucking camera is still on. It's shitting me up. Because honestly, if I film this again. If I film this again. And it doesn't fucking work. I will be jumping out the window. Why do guys put their friends first over their girlfriend? <sighs> See, this is a difficult one. Because I don't know the scenario. Um, if it's a scenario where it's happening all the time. And he is putting his mates over his girlfriend all the time. Like every single time, you know, he makes plans with his girlfriend and then he cancels to be with his mates or he always puts his mates first. He's just being a fucking arsehole. He's got way too comfortable. He doesn't think he's going to leave and he thinks that he can go out with the boys. He's also probably missing a little bit of, you know, the single life. And when he goes out with the boys, he likes that. In a way, he's being a fucking dick. However, on the flip side, if he's doing it a couple of times a week where he's kind of, you know going out of his mates and he's not spending as much time with you and stuff like that you need your own time in a relationship you need your own time to recharge your batteries to kind of have that little time away from each other and stuff like that don't get me wrong i would literally want to spend 24 7 with my girlfriend but we'd also probably end up killing each other you've got to have at least a day or whatever it is to yourself you know what i mean just to recharge just to go and see your friends and spend time with your mates and that kind of thing so if it's happening all the time he's being a dick He's probably missing a little bit of the single life. He's probably losing feelings for you. Nicest way possible. If he's just sacking you off at every single opportunity, it's not looking good, is it? If he's doing it a couple of times, he just wants to go out with the boys and have a couple of beers and not get it in the neck. You know, he's just looking to go and see his mates, kind of recharge, have some time away from you because he spent time with you all week or he's been seeing you all week or whatever it is. He's been putting all of his effort into you all week and then he's having a couple of hours or a night out with the boys, you know, just to kind of recharge and have his me time. Everybody needs me time in a relationship and if you don't, you're going to end up killing each other. <laughs> you're going to end up on one of them Netflix documentaries for fuck's sake that everyone watches. It's just not good, you know. So they're the two situations. If he's doing it all the time, he's being a dick and probably losing interest. Um, and he's probably bitching to the boy saying, I can't be bothered to be with her. He's got too comfortable with you, so he can't really be bothered to leave, but he thinks that he can do whatever the fuck he wants. On the flip side, if he's going out a couple of times, you need your alone time, and you, he needs to be able to have that time with the boys without getting it in the neck, so cut him some slack. Why do boys make the effort with you when they're in person, but then over text, they're shit? Oof, this is a sticky one. From personal experience... It's hard not to put the effort into someone when you're actually with them, okay? So he's, ob he's obviously going to put the effort into you when he is with you. That's the easy part. The hard part of a relationship is putting in the effort when you're not physically together. I would say he could potentially be a shit texter. But if he wanted to talk to you, he would. And in my eyes he may be getting entertainment from elsewhere. Now, that is not gospel. I'm not saying that he's cheating on you. I don't know if you're in a relationship. I don't know from that question. You might just be talking to each other or whatever. But in my eyes, if that was me, and this is going to make me sound like a fucking asshole, but when I'm with someone, yeah, I'd give them my full attention. And then if I didn't really care that much and stuff like that, I'd come home and I'd never, I wouldn't really message them that much. If I actually liked the girl... I would spend all I would spend that time with her. I'd spend three, four days of all, however long it is, and be really good in person. And then when she left and I went home, I would then still be texting her an adequate amount all the time. Whatever it was that you two have, you know, some people, some couples only text two, three times a day. Some couples text every single minute of the day. It depends on your relationship. But like I would be texting the adequate amount to show her that I'm still really interested in her. If he's just gone from being really good in person to shit over text. 
normally means that he's probably talking to multiple other people. Because if he's only talking to you, how the fuck is he not replying? Why would a guy say that he likes you, offer you out on a date, and then last minute, take someone else? If you want me to be brutally honest, in his eyes, he found someone else better to take on the date. You was there, he thought, yeah, fuck it, I'll take her on a date. Clearly kept his options open the entire time he's talking to you. He's found someone that he deems as a better person to take on the date. He even finds more attractive or gets on better with, and he's taken her instead. There is no if, buts, or maybes about that one. That's as simple as that. He's played you. Cunty thing to do. Massive, massive arsehole thing to do. But that's the truth. There's not a thing where he might like you and he might just want to try things out with this girl. He thinks that girl's fitter than you. He thinks that that girl's better suited for him. So he's taken her instead of you. So if he tries to come crawling back because that date didn't go too well and he thinks, oh, okay, now I'll date this person. Don't let him because why would you want to be someone sloppy seconds? Like, no. How do boys move on so quickly? Um, do you know what? It's not all boys, but I think that they're, I think a good trait not a good trait, but there's a trait that some boys have where they're able to emotionally switch off from the situation and and, and cap it, I guess. Um, if we're going off stereotypical male and female stereotypes, normally the female is the more emotional person within the relationship. There's that, there's that thing of, you know, when you first break up, the boy will be going out doing whatever the fuck they want and looking like they're moving on. And the girl will sit at home and cry and feel like shit. And then in a month's time, the boy will be doing that and the girl will be going out and doing whatever the fuck she wants. I think it's that, you know, we it, we feel it. Trust me, we do. We don't, you know, yeah, fair enough. We go out with the boys and stuff and we go for beers and that that's just how some boys cope with it. But we feel it. It's not that we move on quick. I just think for boys, because again, stereotypically, you know, their class is the more unemotional lot in society. You know, men aren't emotional, whereas females are. Um, Again, in society, that's not my opinions. I think that boys, because society's kind of put this thing of don't show emotion on, they don't show emotion. So they just, they just get up and get on with it. And it looks like they don't give a shit. When realistically inside, there's a lot of people that have gone through breakups and stuff that are actually bra broken inside. Us lads are fucking broken inside. It's just some boys don't show it. It just looks like they've moved on. They don't give a shit about you. But it's because they don't want to show any emotion. So it's a catch-22. Some boys genuinely will move on quick because they literally didn't give a fuck about you. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Some boys will look like they're moving on, but actually they're broken inside. You know, it's one of them. Which one it is, unfortunately, you will probably never know. <laughs> because they're probably not going to tell you. And yeah, but it's, it's not that we're moving on quickly. You know, I've seen girls move on quick as well, you know, but like, it's not that we're moving on quickly. It's that society says that we shouldn't show emotion. So we just, we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and we, you know, we soldier on. Some people can do it. Some people can't, you know, and it's one of them. You're never going to know. Now, this one's a weird one, right? Why do guys ignore you slash ignore DMs? Why can they not just tell you if they're not interested? <sighs> this is a this is a weird one. I didn't really know how to answer this one. Um, look, if they're in a relationship and you've messaged them, I, in my eyes, right, and this is my personal opinion, if you're in a relationship and you've got someone sliding into your DMs and you reply... Why are you replying? Even to reply to say that you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Why are you replying? You know, I'd just ignore it. I'd full blown ignore it. I wouldn't even, I'd just read the message and just ignore. Some people are different. Some people will kind of be like, you know, oh, sorry, I've got a boyfriend. Um, and then if the guy tried to carry on or the girl tried to carry on the conversation, etc., etc., you know, then it's a sticky one. I don't think it's a bad thing if a boy ignores you and doesn't say that he's not interested if you've tried to slide in and he has got a girlfriend even in the same respect 
that if you try and slide into a boy's DMs and he's single and he ignores you, that's up to him. You know, he doesn't owe you anything. He might not know who you are. He doesn't have to reply to you. You know, you've taken the risk. And I understand because it's a big risk for girls to kind of shoot their shot with boys. You know, again, boys are meant to be the ones that make the first fucking move and all this shit. Um, which I think is like bollocks, by the way, girls. If you want to shoot your shot, shoot here. But I don't know. I don't think that's that bad. You know, he's obviously not interested. That's his way of showing that he's not interested. He might have a girlfriend and he doesn't want to offend her by even replying. You know, he or, you know, he's single and he's not interested. So he's not replying to you. Take it on the chin. You shot your shot. It didn't work. In the, in the nicer way possible, if I was if I was going to reply to every single person that said that they fancied me and to, to reply to them and say, oh, I've got a girlfriend, I'd never had any fucking hours in the day, you know? And I don't think a lot of people would either. You know, social media is a weird and wonderful place where anybody and everybody can message you, you know? Even if you didn't have a fucking following, you'd spend a good couple of hours of the day replying to messages, sitting there going, I've got a girlfriend, I've got a girlfriend, it's just to not to be rude. It's just easier to leave it, you know? Everyone does it. You have a quick look on your message request, you have a flick down, that's it. I don't sit there and think, oh, I should probably reply to her because she said that she fancies me, or I should probably reply to her because she's gone, when are we getting married? You know? I, 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 I can't be rude. It's just like, ignore it, whatever. You know, I'm in a, I'm in a relationship, I can't be bothered, you know? So I don't think that's that bad, personally. I think, you know, you got to take things with a little pinch of salt, you know? You, you would expect him to not be replying to girls no matter who it was if he was in a relationship with you and he's doing that so you can't really moan at him we'll do a few more this one was riddled everywhere right why do boys that i used to see slash exes act like i don't exist but then as soon as i start to get close to someone else they start kicking off or kicking off or trying to come back in um because they probably think that you weren't going to get it close to anybody else they're not close to anybody else at that time and they're having to watch you do it. So they will try and poke their head back in and they will try and talk to you and they will try and fuck it up for you. That doesn't mean that they want you back and that doesn't mean that it would ever work, by the way. So do not get back with them. Do not fucking get back with them. It will not fucking work, okay? It's jealousy. You're moving on and you're happy. And maybe they haven't moved on and maybe they're not happy and they're jealous that you're being able to do that. And that's why they're pissed off. And that's why they poke their head in to cause maybe a little bit more misery. Or they literally are just being an arsehole and they always thought that you two would get back together or whatever and then you're finally starting to move on and you're meeting someone new and ruddy ruddy rada and they can't let go they want their cake and they want to eat it they've probably been out there doing whatever the fuck they want to be doing with whoever the fuck they want to be doing and then as soon as you kind of have plucked up the courage you've built on yourself and you've started to move on they come back and go no i don't want you to do that don't do that that'll really hurt me please don't get with someone else haven't you shagged five other people like what it's a control thing to be honest um, and it's a, it's, it happens quite a lot. Look, it's never nice seeing your ex move on. Nobody likes it. No matter how much of an asshole they were to you, even if they weren't an asshole, right? Even if they were the nicest person to you ever, or if they were a complete and utter asshole, it is never nice seeing your ex move on. Okay, it's not. Let's not bullshit. Let's not beat around the bush. It ain't. No one fucking likes it. There's two types of people. Some people deal with it and go calm. I'm doing the same. Some people try and worm their way back in. It's just one of them. But it's not because they want to be with you again. It's because they just kind of want to take that tiny, weeny little bit of con control back in, in, the, in the whole game of the relationship or whatever it was. They want that last final, yeah, fuck you. And we'll do one final one. This was asked quite a lot as well. Um, it is... Why do boys lose interest so quickly, especially when I feel like I've literally been nothing but perfect to him? He is getting entertained by other people. You may have been perfect to him, but he's not been being perfect to you. I said this before in another question. Sack him off. If he loses interest for absolutely no reason, if you genuinely... And I don't believe you've been perfect, by the way. No one's perfect. No one. Everyone fucks up. Everyone makes little mistakes here and there, okay? I'm not saying you've been horrible. I'm saying that you've probably been incredibly nice, but nobody's perfect. But if you are as good as you say you've been and he is 
then just lost interest. He's getting entertainment from somewhere else. There's a very slim chance that sometimes you do just, feelings do just disappear. That takes a very long time, but feelings do just disappear, but they don't just disappear overnight or over the couple of the space of a couple of weeks. The reason why they disappear overnight or over the space of a couple of weeks is because he's starting to put his feelings into someone else and he's feeling someone else. <laughs> that is the only reason as to why. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. But that is the only reason as to why he would be moving on so quick. Somebody else is helping him move on quick. That's all I've got time for. Well, it's not all I've got time for, but it's all I'm willing to do because I filmed this video twice now. That's four. Twice now. <laughs> Little something different, we're back in front of the whiteboard. I told you, even if they're shit videos, I'm gonna be uploading them because I need to get this up. We're gonna be doing stuff, la 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 la. Um, next video, keep an eye out for the Instagram because I'm gonna be putting a post up. It's gonna be very similar to this one, but it is gonna be what you are afraid to ask boys, right? So questions that you girls are afraid to ask boys. You know, do you like, you know, slim or do boys like slim or curvy girls do boys like this do, like seriously deep shit and i'm going to be completely and utterly fucking honest with you but that is the next video idea so yeah if you want to get involved on instagram go follow that up all the links will be in below my snapchat and my tiktok is also going to be down there if you don't already follow me if you haven't subscribed what are you doing fucking subscribe i'm hilarious right i'm banging out content again we're going to try and do it on the weekly or at least quite regularly i promise you like i said the next video has already been thought of and that will be being posted and getting your guys questions on my instagram very soon so if you've done all that if you follow me on insta you follow me on tiktok you follow me on snapchat and you've subscribed on here and click that motherfucking bell and giving it a like then there's not much more to say apart from love you all lots. I'll catch you next time. And thank you for watching. Bye, bitches. <laughs>